And here we go. This is Flash at In a Perfect World on the last day of March, the 31st, 2020. So, let's see, I'm hanging loose to see if I got live or not. I think I did the right thing with these new toys that Grim found to play with. I will assume, being as I don't read on the site that I'm not live, that I'm live. And we'll say, hey, thanks to Grim, the usual. Appreciate all your help. And uh, the bots and bodies for you to participate with in the Ireland chat are identified by these here names. Barman, Beetle, Cowboy, Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Esmo, Chelsea, Doe, Circulo, Dan, Bam, Meter, Duh, Graham, Z, Hey, Mary, Java, Doctor, Two, Meister, Brow, Prince, Rob, Works, Rome's Trust, Number One, Vanna White, Weather, Dork, The Phantom, CC, Six, Six, Chaska Rubbera, Cyborg Noodle, and Siv, Me, Frumpy, Frumpy Work, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss underscore, Pone Sauce, Raptor, Jesus, Sock Puppet, Smarty Ass, The Holiest Roger, What the Hell, and z -Picks. Those are your playmates in the chat room today, tonight, this afternoon. Whatever you want to call it. And we had a little mishap. Miss Mary and me, Flash, Saturday on the dork table, we were, I don't know, I guess kind of mocking how everybody's always living in judgment of their longevity and how long they're going to live. And it's me first and then you. And we were talking about how mishaps just kind of happen. Sometimes you're just the... The one that gets tagged. So Sunday, apparently, she was out with the farmer coming from or going to point A to point B. And she ended up getting front-ended by somebody else that was, you know, driving unsafely. They wrecked their car. And as a result of their wreck, they bounced off something and ended up wrecking her. So, not to talk about the the balance or whose fault or any of that. It's just Mary got a little danged up and she says that she should be all right in about a month. But that's pretty danged up for uh, a little car accident. But not it wasn't nothing that put her down on her back for good. So if you're a Mary fan out there, just send her your, uh, you know, <laughs> your, your frequency. She'll understand. And, uh, let's see, I don't know what to, uh, really do. I've been reading so much anti-coronavirus material the last week that I'm, I'm cured of it. I don't care at this point in my life. I don't really care what people believe is what matters. It's not this life that we're in doesn't seem to have a whole lot to do with what we can see in front of us, but what has the most power over what we believe we see in front of us, maybe. Because uh, the rest of the world is looking at this dragon, and they're crying, there's a dragon, and I'm looking and I don't, I don't see no dragon. I read the threat of a dragon in, in writing, and I see people post things, and, but proof as far as the way I understand proof, I'm I'm not convinced that this isn't anything more than another nine one one. You know, people are dying, and sure, but the way that it's being represented to you about their death, that's being misdirected. And I guess the reason that I I'm so heartful, you know, full, I'm so full of this, whatever this belief is, is um. Nobody stopped fighting any wars. So, well, if they're so worried about us, why are they still killing people with bombers? 
Could it be because those people, you can't threaten them with a cold? <laughs> I don't think the fighters, you know, really believe all this shit in the first place. I mean, the real people out there fighting. Not, not these sitting in your soft-ass cushy chair like me. Shit, I ain't going to fight anybody. I think that people that physically fight have hit the wall of stupidity. <laughs> Because uh, whenever I got physical in my history, it's always been because I've ran out of words. Words won't do it from here. Let's slam some face and see what happens. And uh, that doesn't really ever go anywhere in the end anyway. And the, the funny part about it is if you fight with your friends, your friends always forgive you for being an idiot. Or they or you break, up, break up, and that's the end of the friendship. So... You know, fighting serves its purpose. I guess it just depends on how far you want to carry it. Just, you can stop at any time. You can stop in the thinking stage or maybe the yelling stage or even the punching in the face stage. But once somebody actually is physically finished, <laughs> oh, then things look different. Now, I've never done any of that killer diller murder people for fun stuff. I've read and seen tons of movies about it over my life. You know, like the coronavirus movies. Um, and my mind's supposed to be conditioned, I suppose, to accept any shit that the government throws my way. And I'm supposed to just say, yes, sir. Okay, sir. All right, sir. But there's nothing going on here physically to match the trauma of the newspaper and the Internet. I'll give you an example. This morning, my wife Circle is going to take the dog out to the beach. She does that because she's home and she likes to go out to the beach and enjoy herself. Fifteen minutes after she leaves, there is a rash of sirens. I see fire trucks going towards the beach where she goes to hang out. Cops. There's motorcycle cops. There's fire trucks rolling. And this goes on and back and forth for about a half an hour. And I'm waiting for my wife to come back. And I'm waiting for my wife to come back. About an hour goes by. And she, that's about it. She goes down there back in about an hour, hour and a half. And this particular thing had me starting to worry. And what happened is she comes in. She had to pass what happened to come home. And apparently, there was a roofing job down the road. And when they roof here, they use the tar paper and a torch. Not hot tar out of a bucket and all that nasty shit. They do it more clean, but more dangerous with a torch. And apparently, something caught fire and uh, burned up the house. And the house cooked. Of course, we live in wooden homes with bricks. So, hmm. but the so far, I don't know for sure. I'm going off what I heard, but it was down the street. The police were directing traffic around it all afternoon. So, it was a pretty exciting time in this little, you know, uh, bedroom town, so to speak. It's like a retirement village, but. What was amazing is when all this hoopla is going on, I don't see any social distancing. I saw people, sirens of blazing, headed for the fucking problem to solve what was wrong and get everything back to normal. So, coronavirus or not, and people in town acting ridiculous over a cold or not, when push comes to shove and somebody's house is burning down... <laughs> Nobody brings a bag of marshmallows and charges the other guy $10 a marshmallow. <laughs> this is not Florida or L.A. or New York. It's a really, really small place. And I know there's, you know, my people that don't care for me have taken a special distaste <laughs> to the country that I live in. <laughs> and... I find it amusing because, to be honest with you, I think all countries suck. And if this government vanished tomorrow, I wouldn't miss it for five seconds. 
I try not to pay attention to the one they have now. But, you know, there's only so much ignoring you can do. And then the real world will go, hey. But, you know, let me have my few moments of peace and quiet. I'm an older guy now. I deserve it. Right? <laughs> yeah, I get a kick out of it when people tell me they deserve something. Hmm. I'll tell you what you guys don't deserve. Hmm. And that would be this uh, this bank bailout. Six trillion dollars. I don't think the, the one in 2008 was one trillion total. This one is six trillion dollars. And God damn it, how, how do you do this? You're, that's going to put your national debt. <laughs> your grandchildren's grandchildren will be paying the Rothschilds for this. So what we really need is not going to happen, I don't think. But I would say a nice collapse and a fucking reset. And stop all this international shit. Put these people down. You know? Stop looking up at, at other people that are equal to you. It doesn't make any sense. But it's like there's these two different realities. There's the one that I believe. And then there's the one that rules everything. And, it, and it's always reported back to me differently than what I see. I see all this world where I've been able to travel and, and do stuff and have fun and meet people and all kinds of good stuff came and went over my lifetime. And here I am and in a week the whole world's on a shutdown because they're afraid to catch a cold. Of course, they're not told that part of it. They're, hmm, things were manipulated a little bit. Try explaining that to a voter. <laughs> he might as well just Set yourself on fire in protest of the fucking coronavirus because 95% of these other monkeys, well, they're afraid of the dark. and They believe we go into space. <laughs> Some of them even believe that, uh, you know, Hillary killed, what's his name, Gaddafi, so that, you know, America could be safe. No, there's a lot more to that story. The deeper you go into the Gaddafi saga, the more help he was trying to be to his people, his home country, his continent, Africa. And apparently, uh, you know, powers in charge didn't want him to give them a water pipe. <laughs> I didn't hear about that for a long time. But whether it's true or not, it's not beyond the scope of government, especially the one I'm from, to interfere in a foreign government, destroy them, just fuck up everything they have and blame them for fucking them up. See what you made us do because you were so evil. And if you've ever taken the time to do any research into uh, <laughs> Gaddafi or <laughs> what country was he the king of? He was the king of Libya. That's right. I couldn't remember. I was having a brain fart. But I remember I remember Gaddafi videos on, uh, on YouTube. And People, I don't know, people are different when you're told they're different. But when you watch them, they all seem the same. You know? The Trump supporter was no different to me than the Gaddafi supporter. Yeah, Grimmer, Libya, Cirque reminded me. I asked her, she's right. Me. Oh, we hardly have any, any uh, lag anymore. Well, I, I don't know. I, I've seen something the, recently, it was about... Hillary bragging when they assassinated Gaddafi. And, you know, I didn't live in his country, so his ruling didn't interfere with my life. But his ruling did interfere with the, the U.S. government's interests. and They had to stop him. He was getting too big and doing too many things that, wow, free people aren't allowed to do those things. <laughs> and... Now we've got the coronavirus to nail the coffin lid shut. Stop all the dissenters. Keep everybody alive believing that Tesla is the name of a fucking motor car. <laughs> the only way you can get electricity is by, you know, creating it. Charging people. That's what we have. So, maybe... Uh, hmm. 
Maybe people will make the best of this lockdown thing and get real. And finally figure this thing out and stop it. Stop supporting it. If there is no election in 2020, <laughs> I don't believe that will stop the people that really run shit. I think that they would show you. If you just all said, you know what, I'm not going to vote. <laughs> show me. <laughs> well, they'd pick a president for you in your absence. So that tells me everything I need to know. And it's the same here. There's a kingdom, you know, royalty, parliament. But the beauty of the whole thing is the small population and the inability to speak the native tongue. Ah, when the neighbors were all out gossiping about what was going on down the road, and I wanted to go into town and go get my groceries or what I wanted for um, dinner tonight. They're all in a big group, and they all said hello to me, and I waved at them as I walked by because, well, one of them is, he just had got cancer for fuck's sake he's recovering today from cancer he's been fighting for like i don't know a year how long has all he been doing with this about a year and he's standing out there with a mask and i'm like not believing the story at all so i'm trying to be nice to these people you know because a part of me wants to giggle but that guy's got cancer if there is a cold out there to get don't give it to him <laughs> He's going to get sick. Now, see, that's common sense. But to the guy that's my age or younger than me out there wearing a mask in the grocery store, wow. Hmm. Hmm. See, to me, that seems a little a little bit weak. But then I don't know. Maybe that guy's got cancer, too. It's, it's This is the point I, I didn't ever want to have to come to. And someday... When they open the bar back up, and I'm over there sitting at the end of the bar all by myself, like I often do, I'll just be remembered as being the guy that thought of it. <laughs> Social distancing. It was brought here by an American prick. You know, the guy that didn't want to learn to speak Danish. Of course, we all know the reality that's not going to happen. But, it's a good story. And I believe that's the life that we live is good stories. You know, whatever story makes you feel good or bad, that's what you can believe. That's what I believe. Now, maybe you're different. Maybe uh, I lack the ability to use logic and reason and all these gadgets and gizmos and, oh, I don't know, see things from the proper perspective and all that horseshit. But I think what I learned in my first 20 years was everybody thinks the fucking world is different from the next guy. Always been aware of that some level is, you know, what you see and what I see, they're not the same thing. And there's not a lot of people in the world that you can really sit down with and, and converse with about that particular topic. It doesn't go very far without <laughs> disagreement attached, which is kind of the point of it. You know, it's, what makes you angry makes me giggle, and what makes me giggle makes you angry. So, hmm, I guess we're both wrong, or we're both right, or we're both something. I don't really think I care anymore. Uh, hmm. The end, the end game that they're they're showing us. Well, we'll just add six more trillion to the debt and give you idiots a twelve hundred dollars each, and you'll shut up. Apparently, that's all it took. I I don't want no part of the U.S. federal government. I don't care what they're giving away. I, if they were giving away years, I would reject their help. <clears throat> You're welcome. But, of course, I'm that minority. <clears throat> the, uh, I'm pro-hermit with a wife. <laughs> right, honey? Okay, you know, I'm, I've got nothing against people being individual or living a hermit life. And I just personally think that uh, my thing works way better with a partnership. I'm not a solo act. <laughs> I don't even do radio worth the shit. When I'm alone, I don't feel comfortable. But when i got a partner, see, so my balance is just a little bit different than other people's. 
I think I called tonight's show. Let me open up my note page. See what I had titled it. The friction has begun. And I guess the reason I called the show that tonight is friction is the result of two objects trying to occupy the same place at the same time. And because of it, you create a heat. And the heat, just as the friction continues, becomes more unbearable. <laughs> and wow, some people have no threshold for fucking pain at all. All you got to do is tell them, I'm going to tell your mommy. And the next thing you know, the whole country's on a lockdown. People are losing their jobs. Because somebody figured out. You know, if we tell these people they're dying of a virus that they got because some idiot in China ate some bat soup. I'll bet they'll buy that. Look how far we got with 9-11. <laughs> Remember Kennedy? <laughs> Look what we did to Tesla. <laughs> how about hemp? Hmm? 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 Yeah, I, I didn't think I'd be convinced of uh, a fraud. In the, in the world today, that amongst, we have the internet for crying out loud. <laughs> Every fucking tool you can imagine to have to fight the dreaded coronavirus is right in front of you. But, if you don't believe anything but the state, well, then it doesn't matter what you see. Because... <laughs> They're telling you, hey, people in this country are dying by the bazillions, man. Hey. And since the coronavirus started, the only things I know that have happened in the world that were negative is my friend Mary got hit in a car Sunday. And one of my neighbors had their house set on fire on an accident. Who knows? Could have been the wind picked something up. It, it was just probably a fluke of life. But I don't think the guy tried to do anything. So we're just, you know, we're just human beings trying to survive. And now we're being distracted by this thing that doesn't exist. <laughs> and it exists because the flu kills people. But if you don't tell people the truth, and you tell them a little bit of the truth and a lot of bullshit. Well, then you got a coronavirus. And they've done it before and before that, before then. Hey, Rob Works, how you doing? I just noticed I can't seem to chat and read the text. I don't know. Think of my own crap and try to answer your crap at the same time. I'm not that good. <laughs> he said, hey, back. Well, there's, there's progress. Now, for a few minutes, I'll pump up the show that's coming up on Thursday, okay? Because the reality of it is Larry Woods and Rob Works, these guys know stuff. Now, I don't claim to know a whole lot of shit. But, I am pretty good at putting A and B together. Me and Vinny did it. Vinny did it by himself. Uh, now, I'm continuing the process. And it was, uh, I was asked if I could do Rob a favor. And I said, sure, Rob, I'll, what can I do for you? And I did it, and it turned into, hey, blah, blah, blah. And now we have a weekly show called Dropping a Coil <laughs> Thursday on the reallibertymedia.com. And it is specifically for people that are interested in alternative electrical energy and some other way to accomplish what we're doing without making things worse. I'll let them do all the technical explaining. That's just my side of it. You know, There's what we're doing, and there's other ways that we probably should be doing. And the knowledge has been there. It's just been buried underneath and hidden. And any time a company has come forward and tried to make something of it, the bigger people buy it up and then bury it. Well, now we have the Internet. So... They can do a lot of that still, but not if you go open source. <laughs> and sure, there's pitfalls in anything, but the information is out there. And like Larry will tell you, there's tons of people around the world doing their own version of what Larry's doing. 
it's not an individual singular thing. <laughs> it's just the nerds are all doing it. Now the dorks are getting involved. And before we know it, hey, when the heaps start screaming to shut us down, we know we're on to something. Oh, did I say that on the radio? I meant the Jews. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to be I don't want to appear racist to my radio friends out there in Radio Land. <laughs> but um, I guess the the truth of it is some part of my mind just doesn't recognize all this race and religion and color. It's cute for a few years. You know, I had a fun time with it. You know, now that I'm a grown man, I, I, I don't really think I care anymore. It's just... It's fun to watch the kids paint their hair blue. I mean, I get a snicker when I see them. It's fun. They're just being kids. It's, it doesn't hurt me or anything. So the things that people, uh, <laughs> they, they, they do, they do them to shock society. Well, I, I grew up shocking society. Some of the best so shockers of society, were, they were dying just when I was just turning old enough to even know what they were doing. But luckily for me, I had some cousins that were older that guided me along. Hey, Jim Morrison. What? What's that mean? <laughs> I'm nine years old, hanging out with my older cousins, listening to the doors. <laughs> it was hysterical. Uh, it was like, uh, I don't know, being a trophy kid, you know, where the, the bigger kids... They were there to help, and, they, and I took the help that they gave me. So, hmm. of course, it could have worked against me, and that's why today, as the planet is engulfed in this coronavirus, I sit here more concerned about Mary and the poor woman down the road that had her house burned down than I do anybody that gets this virus, because the flu doesn't care. The flu, you can call it whatever you freaking like. And if you don't take care of yourself when you get ill and then things degress from there and you catch a flu, yeah, it's fatal. Well, hmm. I mean, what did I miss a meeting or something? Is it is it I know this kind of stuff and it's common to me and everybody else doesn't? I, I don't think I'm so much smarter or aware of reality than the average show. But, uh, hmm. Ah, uh, can you be racist against your own race, says Grimnir. I think so, yeah, because uh, if Jews heard me speak, ah, uh, they would not like it, because they don't want to be told these things, you know. Then I'd be anti-Semitic. Uh, they don't even know what a Semite is. It's insane. It's like, uh, it's the same thing as the slaves. There was... Irish people never whine about, oh, I hope my family was a slave. Da, 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 da. But boy, the black girls, good God. And then once they start, they won't shut the fuck up. There's a few guys that are like that, but I didn't mean too many of them. Mostly it was females. But uh, I never met an Irish anybody anywhere that ever sniveled about, my people were slaves and I want reparation. Fuck no, they just went on with life and took your shit from you. <laughs> I was being funny about that. <laughs> uh, I did meet a few Irish people, and they didn't seem like a weak, laid down, you know, roll over on top of them kind of people, though. But I met most of them when I was in Scotland. You know, I guess from 11, 11 to 13, and then I kind of laid off on the pubs at the end of the year 13. Maybe it was 14. No, it was 13. And... But the Irish that I met were some, wow, they were some tough people. The Scots, eh, the, the working class was harsh. But the, the literates, they were kind of soft and squishy. Had an English friend, too, that was uh, from the south, down London town. And <laughs> I don't know. He kind of roostered around, but he was kind of soft and puffy. So it was hard for me to take it all too seriously. You know, we're on an island. <laughs> there's there's not a lot of people living on an island and uh, I, life was so much slower than like uh, living in London hmm. but the things that it taught me the slowing down part maybe that's part of the process that I took 
to get where I'm at with all this hoopla about dying from the flu. Because, you know, that could happen. Sure. All I have to do is just not take care of myself, and I could die of just about anything. But, I don't know, what is it? There's a certain amount of maintenance that you can do to help yourself along. And then, like with Mary, you just don't know, man. I was joking with her. You could get hit by a freaking airplane in your living room. Well, she didn't have to prove it to me that I was right, but, you know, she took one for the team in a sense because she wasn't afraid and locked down in her house. She's out there living, and unfortunately, she was occupying the same space as an idiot at the same time, and the idiot decided to rearrange her back a little bit. So, hmm. I don't know. What's the right way to define how you feel about another person's bad episode? You know, um, and to be, I guess, to be perfectly blunt about it is when bad shit like this happens and people survive it, there's, first off, there's some tough people. And the first thing that comes to my mind is if that would have happened to a weaker person, they would have probably been creamed in it. And, Mary is not a a little woman and all that, but she's not the type to lay down. Run into her with your car and see. (laughs) She'll show you. (laughs) There's there's no... See, you can... Some of us, you can whip our ass, but we'll come back. (laughs) And uh, I don't know. I, I feel terrible about the accident happening to her, but still... Uh... She had the wherewithal to to make a fatal fucking situation not fatal and stay in some kind of control and get through it the best way possible. And her and the farmer made it through. So I would assume Little Miss Mary's got plenty of stuff in you know the future to inform us about as we as as we survive the coronavirus of 2020. Has anybody yet met or know of a victim, a fatal victim of the coronavirus to the moment? I think on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat, the death toll is still at zero. We have yet to lose a member, bot or body. (laughs) And there's a couple of bots people would wish that fucking bot got the damn coronavirus and croaked. We were all pissed off at Barman when he turned on the trivia the other day. And nobody remembered the the code to turn it off. It was pitiful. (laughs) Uh, It was like, I don't know. It was like watching monkeys fucking at football or something. And I was just sitting there laughing along because I couldn't remember it either. But I have never claimed to be the best guy on the computer in the first place. And here we go. Report number one from Grimnir. I don't personally know anyone with any coronavirus. Dot, dot, dot. Only what has been reported by the clap. <sighs> See, and that, that's where I'm at. You know, uh, we have yet to hear fire trucks and ambulance and sirens go on crazy and shit. And here we did. And it didn't have anything to do with the coronavirus. It was somebody burnt somebody's house down. And damn, the people were like, let's get there and put this fire out. They weren't, you know, sanitizing their hands and putting on masks and introducing each other. And fuck no, they had a fire to put out. So, so, hmm, you can only take this corona threat so far, right? And the way I see it, when I was at the grocery, what was I? Yeah, I went to the mall thing. And uh, people are just so sanitary and, you know, virus conscious. Now, they make a big spectacle of, there's a long corridor from the toilets to the main body of where everybody walks. So they just happen to install sanitizer dispenser right there at the very end so when you come away from the toilet and you don't want to be publicly shamed 
Well, you better stand there and sanitize your fucking hands, Bosco. <laughs> You're smiling for the camera, fool. <laughs> and it's my belief, personally, that I've got bacteria on me that's, no matter how sick I might sound with this little backed up snoz thing, I got a big nose, so my nose is taking beating through the cold. And uh, if this is it, wow, I, hmm. yeah, runny nose, cold is typical, but yeah, this is springtime, crying out loud, I go through this every year with my chew nose. I'm going to, maybe I could file a suit against Israel for giving me a big honking nose. <laughs> it drips in springtime. <laughs> I make that Courtney Love look like an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> I even got my wife. Uh, I'm not. I was trying to make a joke. <laughs> and um, if, you, if you don't know who she is, it wouldn't be funny now, would it? <laughs> if there wasn't just a ring of truth to the joke, you wouldn't get it. But I don't know. Well, hmm. yeah, I I guess we'll just go with Grimner because. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Mary had the car on her virus. Luckily for her, she knows how to drive. And uh, I, according to Wayne Farmer, he said she did great and probably uh, saved them from everybody getting uh, killed to just having whatever did happen bad happen. So, you know, awareness is a wonderful thing. You know? And some people have it. Some people claim to have it, you know. Oh, in a time of crisis, I'm the guy to look for. Blah, 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 blah. And then there's other people that'll tell you the truth. In the time of crisis, I'll be in the corner with my wife trying to get some. Uh, but you know, <laughs> the world loves a hero, and I'm not a hero. I never wanted to be a hero. Oof, what a responsibility being a hero must be, you know, because you'd have to be able to get a cold. And go to work. Wow, go to work with a cold. I don't know. I don't know, boss. I I don't think I can do it. Well, man, my in my father's day, my father worked and my mother did not work. My dad didn't have a great job. He worked for Ford Motor Company, and no matter what, if he had a cold or if he didn't had it, too much to drink the night before, it didn't bother him to. Oh, I'm gonna stay home and be a pussy. He'd rather have been at work than been at home dealing with us, <laughs> I think, because he went to work. And the UAW was a very, very good to be workers. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you, it wasn't a bad deal. And as the dollar got you know, more worthless, they just gave us more dollars so that we wouldn't feel the, you know, the ass kicking so bad. But I think like 10 years ago, the, uh, the UAW is averaging like 30 bucks an hour. <laughs> no, when I was doing it, I was getting eight and change. And I thought, wow, this is a lot of fucking money for this job. But they were willing to pay it. So I took it. But uh, the my career in, in Ford didn't last very long. <laughs> but I still kept up on, you know, wages and shit like that over the years, looking on as a hmm, consumer, I suppose. <laughs> and and when I thought about wow these guys are making thirty bucks an hour and they're starving to death, then it all made sense, you know, in a in a I guess in a sick way, because uh, I was told when my mom told me my father didn't quite get it. it took my dad a few years to follow, but my mom told me that they're going to shut the Ford plant down before way before they made it public. I was working at the place, and she's telling me, hey, they're going to shut it down. I worked there a year and a half, and they shut the Ford plant down. <laughs> so my my mother knew what the fuck business was all about. It was the weirdest family you'd ever seen. Anyway, so here we are now, right? And Mary's worked in the auto industry. She's got... Uh, Retail experience from working at corporate, I guess is the way to put it. She worked for a dealership and learned how business has just been hijacked by these thieves, you know, 
him. How badly the customer is treated today compared to how, how we were treated, say, 50, 60 years ago. And the pump has just been primed and primed and primed. And, and generation after generation comes and goes. <laughs> they just change the rules every 20 years. And lie about the past and raise the prices. Tell people that we have things like a gold standard. And the dollar has a value. Look over here. See? It says so on the chart. <laughs> and if you ever heard Vinny talk, Vinny knew who owns the money. It's probably why we uh, started doing the radio together in the first place. We saw so many of these hidden things the government you know, doesn't want average Joe to know. And every time that uh, average Joe has the opportunity to find something out that could change his life, the government just finds a better distraction than the one before. Constant. It was measles. What, two and a half months ago, we were all going to die of measles. And and I was being called names because it wouldn't go along with the measles. But I've tried to tell people. There's a guy over on UCY.com. His name is Clint Richardson. He does YouTube videos. He writes books. The guy's educated, beyond educated. Has a great way of defining things the way he sees them. And I just find a lot of comfort, I suppose, in the, uh, his explanation of how he sees the things that he speaks of. Now, I don't agree with anybody else 100%. That'd just be ignorant. But a lot of what the guy says, it rings a bell. It makes me look for answers to other things that maybe I wouldn't even think of. And probably right now is the time in life where, uh, well, if you're not taking this shit seriously, like me, people are just don't know what to make of you. So, if you're one of the people that does take this seriously, well, hmm, you're still here. I don't see anybody's name off the RLM chat room. Uh, still about the same amount of bots and bodies that are usually here. I have yet to hear of anybody come forward and say, oh, I'm dying of the flu, help, help. But I did hear Mary get into a car accident. Hmm. So, well, coronavirus, ah. But not really. You know, it's not a laughing matter. It's, uh, we're, uh, we're so brilliant. I think that's probably the collective problem is, uh, it's socially fucked up to set yourself apart from the herd and, uh, not go along with the popular story. That, that'll really get, you know, come on. In the end, I always take the beating doesn't matter uh, it, what what the state tells me is always the opposite of the truth, no matter what it is. So why bother to start in the, <laughs> don't start in the lie. And, uh, and I don't. And I've been, you know, pretty much told to stop. Well, okay. So I did. I stopped talking to a few people. And the sad part about it is my talking about the possibility that we're all being scammed for a bigger reason than we can really understand. Okay, laugh at that if you like, but there's different countries are doing different things. It's not uniformed. It's not, it's, <laughs> it, hmm. Sweden, for example, the weirdest fucking place in, in, on God's gray earth. <clears throat> they don't have any lockdown. And according to the rest of the world, when I was reading about Sweden for the last year, nobody in their right fucking mind would want to live in Sweden. And I met people in Sweden online, and they told me, oh, Sweden is not a place to be. Yet, here we are, we got this coronavirus, and they're not stopping anybody from going anywhere or doing anything. <laughs> So, is that just not a, another uh, brilliant move by the chess players to keep the illusion alive? Let's get a whole country to say, fuck you. That'll keep the people afraid. <laughs> uh, oh, Grimner, uh, 
you haven't heard of any Sweden shaming. Greta is Swedish. God, I saw fuck you Greta bumper stickers on German cars on the internet during the summertime before the everybody else started jumping on hating Greta. So yeah, the, the Germans were ahead of the curve. They were ooh, they were mean to that little girl. And but if you know she's a shill, you know, she comes from an acting family of people that were self promoters. Then the whole thing started to make sense. You know, you go, oh, they followed her around school with a film crew. Why? <laughs> Why? How many fucking schools are there in Scandinavia in the first place, let alone Sweden? But why pick her out of one school in Sweden and spend a year doing what? And then, boom, all of a sudden, the youngest face of climate change for you. And as soon as the coronavirus was getting cooked up on the books, they got rid of her. Hey, climate change is going to be old. Let's just fire her now and save a month of payments and get ready for the next one. And here we are. We're all running around like a bunch of dummies. <laughs> Washing our hands and wearing masks. And the real bastard is the fucking banker that you just gave fucking four trillion dollars to to save them. Instead of saying no. <laughs> well, there was really a vote. I, what I read. Somehow this just got magically passed. I, I don't know. There's no record of who, of who voted for this stimulus package. What I saw on the internet was very weird. I'm so confused. I don't even know what to say about it. But I will. <laughs> I give it a fucking try. I guess that's more than some other people are willing to do. Because, uh, hey, it's not easy to tell other people how much of a bullshit story you think you're seeing while they're locking the whole fucking world down with the you know consent of the people. People are actually begging to be confined. Why? Because they read a story. There ain't nobody doing anything to anyone. I've seen links of guy going from hospital to hospital in Florida. Talking to people inside the hospital. There's no lines. There's no people dying. None of that. They ask them, where's the, you know, the overcrowding from all the people from the coronavirus? And they all kind of giggle and go, there is isn't that. And here we are, you know. It's just a matter of who you want to believe. <laughs> huh? Huh? Whoa, she's talking to the dog right next to me. Anyway, I know, but I can hear you over the headphones. Anyway, ay, 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 ay. How, where do you go with a freaking thing like this? This is like 9-11 part two. Good Lord, I was taking shit from Chloe about not believing... That the jet fuel can melt steel, blah, blah, blah. Because it doesn't. It doesn't burn hot enough. And and one jet isn't going to be enough fuel to bring down a building that size in the first place. But beside all that, besides the explosions at the base of the building <laughs> and the complete dust, where did the fucking building go? Good God, that was a huge fucking building. Hmm. So... I thought some kind of magic weapon took that fucking place out. But no, guess what? It was some terrorists from uh, Saudi Arabia and some airplanes. <laughs> you try that. <laughs> I bet you can't do it. I bet you couldn't do it again if you tried. And people are so lame. Those buildings were a uh, asbestos hazard. They were trying to figure out ways to get rid of the Twin Towers for years. It was going to cost them so much more to do it than it was worth. It, it was just not affordable. So what a coincidence that the Saudis had a plan <laughs> to take down those buildings. Oh, New York's filled chock full of fucking tall buildings. Every fucking where you go in New York, Manhattan. Why those two buildings? Mm. To this day, you sound like a conspiracy nut if you bring up the missing this and the missing that. Oh, that's got nothing to do with it, the opposition will tell you. <laughs> Life is so cheap today. And it was it was in 2001, too. 
but it's so much cheaper today, and they can get us with a threat. Now, thank you, 9-11, because, see, we blew up a few buildings. 20 years go by. You just go, hey, these people died from this thing that we let loose in a laboratory. Hey, people are going to die because this bitch ate some fat head soup, motherfucker. And then you got both sides of the coin at the same time. You got the illiterate believing it, and you got the literate believing it. Because, hey, you can't disprove it. It's it's a threat. <laughs> wow. According to Kate in the RLM chat, it says, I'm just reading text. Hospitals are only at 70% capacity now. Lots of beds available. All right. Now, I've, I've mentioned over the time I've done radio, when I lived in North Carolina, I was amongst the paramedic group. I had a lot of friends, a roommate, whatnot, involved in all that. So I got a lot of insight into what they did, and how they did what they did, and what they thought about what they did. And one of their biggest complaints amongst their own, when I could listen, was how many people wasted their time calling or bogus crap that they really didn't need help with. And here we are, 2020. We got this virus that's just got everybody fucking scared. So now even the hypochondriacs ain't complaining because they don't want to be locked down for two weeks. <laughs> and it's all it's all with your consent at this point. Okay, as far as I can tell. Now, maybe other countries besides Denmark are getting physical and they're forcing. But yet, here I am where, you know, the land is small and the police are large. And yet I see everybody putting their effort on putting out a house fire. Not putting all their effort on breaking up the groups of people that are talking about what's going on down the street with all the, you know, hoopla. So, hmm, I wonder... And there you go. Because life is so simple. I'm such a dummy. You know, life is just so simple for me. And I don't have to do a lot of thinking. Uh. Hmm. But I do have to make sense of what I see. And when I see doesn't match what I hear, I don't generally have the first thought to me is not, I'm seeing something wrong. No, I start to think maybe I'm being lied to again. Let's see, what else we got on the chat? We got a little bit of input on the chat. I had no idea because uh, I was going to read some links, and then I thought about Mary. And, nah, I just figured I'd do an hour of Rambo. I had done an hour, so we're, we'll come up to the hour here, and I'll get off the radio. But, uh, you know, there's life, and there, there's what we get told happens. And it's all a matter of how you interpret it, I suppose. And uh, I don't wish anybody any bad in the first place. So in my mind, I think playing along and acting as though I believe this would be more harmful in the long run than good. Now, I know I'm pissing a few people off and, you know, they're mad at me because I won't take this serious. And I call the people that are afraid of it pussies. But, mm, you know, I, I'll be up in a bit. But, uh where do you draw the line? You know, you got to draw your own fucking line. I'm not drawing line for anyone but myself and my wife. And I don't think I'm drawing one for her so much as she agrees with me. If she didn't, we'd be at odds with each other right now. And in terror of dying of the corona and all the blah, blah, blah. And all I'm trying to do is just respect the guy next door that's uh, recovering from cancer. Enough to not mock him because he's possibly a victim of a flu. I can see that happening to him. So sure, maybe that mask is going to help him. I don't know. But I'm not going to wish him ill because he's already ill. I want to you know, want to see him get better, you know, have a good time, not suffer. So the man's out there with the neighbors chatting it up about the fire down the road. And that's what Danes do. They concern their self about the guy down the road. They don't just hide out and fuck him, you know. There was cops on the scene, there was fire trucks coming and going, they were keeping a distance and all that kind of crap. 
but they were still concerned enough to, you know, hey, let's see what's going on and it doesn't come this way. We need to do this and we need to do that. So uh, if they believe the virus is real or not, they were still all together in the driveway trying to figure out if this fire was going to hurt them, if they needed to, you know, uh, do something to prevent something, whatnot. And uh, hmm. so there's my physical reality. Yeah, I'll I'll get off here in a few minutes here. Uh, it's like five till. Uh, well, let's see what his groom got to say. He says, hey, all you out of work people get out there and buy a new car. Great news. American families will now be able to buy safer, more affordable, and environmentally friendly cars with our new safe vehicle rules. Get rid of those old unsafe clunkers, build better and safer American cars, and create American jobs. Buy American. <laughs> The very thing that uh, when I was coming up and turned in 20 in 1980, that's what the government was doing, was outsourcing all these damn uh, manufacturing jobs. They were getting rid of them. So, yeah, like, wow, 40 years. They've been just shitting all over the working class. And the working class pay wasn't all that bad if you wanted to hold a job and you know be a part of the machine. But once that ended, it was obvious to me that you either went in sales to make money or you starved. There's not really nowhere else to go. But uh, anyway, I grew up and things changed and then they stayed that way. <laughs> it's been, I guess it's been 1980 ever since I can remember. It just degrades a little bit every year, you know. Uh, the body decays, get a little creakier, a little older, a little grayer. <laughs> Does it? I got three minutes till. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Whoa, let's open up a window here and get ready to click off the air. Anyway, um, no, I think I covered about everything. Thanks for joining me tonight on In a Perfect World, trying to do a solo. And uh, I guess I just really miss Miss Mary tonight, especially with her newfound uh, accident. So uh, we'll be looking forward to talking to Larry and Rob on Thursday night. And for a schedule, go to TheRealLibertyMedia.com and check it out. Thanks, everybody. Roger Wilco over and